What's going on, y'all? This is Papito208 with another indie game collector showcase for Bell Automata. So let's go. Apparently, this is a visual novel that should be fully voiced, if I remember correctly. So let's see how this goes. The game contains depictions of grief, internalized ableism, negative body image, a percentage character death from brief flash and light spray discretion is advised. Please click to continue. Sure. An android with a second chance. Master, I wish you were alongside me. Wow, your model is adorable. I've never seen an android like you before. If it were my choice, I wouldn't leave the mental welfare of the young master to a stranger. But I am not as foolhardy as Master Roman. If you're not a fan of me now, then you will be soon. You'll have to excuse me. I was deep in thought. What were you saying? I know what it's like to feel thrown away. To be thrown away. You have a new life now. Now maybe we'll get the chance to start over. Don't waste it. Transition. Let's just, let's just get to it. I remember the first time I opened silicon coated eyelids to see my master. Auto Ford. Oh, I think that worked. I managed to get her booted up. Those were the first words he said to me. What's your name? You machines have names, don't you? I am the Dreamweaver, model T95. No, no, he said. A name isn't a set of numbers and letters, it's... The definition had immediately come to mind, so I recited it out loud, droning the words flatly. A word or set of words by which a person, animal, place, or thing is known, addressed, or referred to. That's right. So, what's yours? The memory of staring at him blankly is so clear that I can practically see him in front of me, even now. I do not have one, I'd replied. Well, that doesn't seem right. How about this? I'll give you one. Fair warning, though, I haven't named anyone since my kids were born. And then he did it. He called me. Aurev? Aurev? We'll just say Aurev. Leave the name alone. He called me Aurev. I loved him like a father. My master. No. My father. Was a weaver of traditional silks. And I? I was the machine that worked tirelessly at his side. For decades, we weaved the highest quality of silks alongside each other. We were creative soulmates. Every thread I wove matched him in every way. Maybe it's because of that, because my master treated me like a person, that I became this way. Hmm. Alive. Sentient. Sapient. So you can imagine how I felt when his family said those words that I will never forget. That old Dreamweaver model? I guess we can auction it off. Grandpa's had it for so long that I doubt anyone would want it now that he's passed. An it. Not a person, but a... a thing. Damn. A thing to be given away without any input of her own. And here I am. Outside the home of my new master. I reach into my pocket for the invoice I was given to deliver to him. Scanning the page, I've come to the spot where it mentions my purchaser by online handle. The Nightmare Prince. 
Excuse me? The name doesn't give me much confidence in having a kind of personality. I focus my surroundings as if I glean some part of his personage personage from his home. The building is large and modern with a sprawling water on either side of the main path to the house. Colorless with darkened windows, I cannot help the fear that weighs down on my chest. I've stood here for an hour, unable to run away, but unable to enter either. What would my old master say? He would say, breathe, Horev. So I do. My chest fills with air, but I admit that it doesn't really calm me. I suppose breathing is just one of many human habits I copied from my master, former master. I fuss with the edge of my dress, trying to keep calm, but even so, I can hear the fans that keep my central system from overheating, spinning at maximum speed. Master, I wish you were alongside me. But then, if my master were still living, I wouldn't be here in the first place. I shut my eyes. There's gotta be a bright side to this situation. I'm still in one piece because I don't think she would say that I, I have a new life now because she still knows the old one but she's glad that she's alive at least his family didn't have me processed into scrap right it's a low bar but it's one I find acceptably comforting my new master wanted me for parts I'd already be in pieces it's a strange thought but one that encourages me Comparatively, maybe the Nightmare Prince isn't so bad after all. I'm delaying, aren't I? Yes, you are, boo. Get in the house. My hovers hover over the doorbell. Once I press this button, there's no going back. Let's do it. Let's go. I press it lightly with the trembling fingers, then shut my eyes. I want to believe that my new master is kind, but instead I just feel dread. Of all the online handles to have, why Nightmare Prince, I wonder? Wonder away. I open my eyes quickly, only to see another android, his bright yellow highlights giving him away. He stands tall, a butler's uniform cut across from his stiff, formal form. I measure up the cut of his silhouette, his measurements uploading directly into my mind for future reference. I am Victor. You're the Dreamweaver model, I presume. Yes, my name is Arev. I reach into my pocket with proof of my receipt. Your master purchased me, but I'm afraid I don't know his name. Victor barely glances at the slip of paper. You won't be needing that for much longer. Toss it if you wish. Toss it? Throw it into a fire, or, since we haven't one at our disposal, rip it apart. Whatever way you think of, just be sure to destroy it. I blink once, and then twice. My eyes drift downwards to stare down at the receipt. This is proof of ownership, and he wants me to destroy it. But without proof of purchase, I could run away. People would be none the wiser. Isn't your master worried about that? Victor shrugs nonchalantly. The most prudent response is, where would you run to? Damn. But even that aside, it is still your choice. My master requested that I deliver that message to you, and so I have. It is up to you to destroy it or not. Up to me? Looking down at the paper, I hold it in my two hands. If I destroy this paper, then I will own myself. I rip it in two. The sound more satisfying than I imagined it would be. I toss it into the water below for good measure. Ooh, you go, girl. Looking bemused, Victor beckons. Your digital copy has also been destroyed. Now then, follow me. Oh. As I walk behind him through automated doors, my nervousness swells like a balloon. The exhilaration wears off as soon as I'm in the house. Will I meet my new... Well, not master. I suppose with no proof of purchase, I have no master now. My new... Employer? 
Ayako him employer? The word feels like something precious on my tongue. Yes, employer. Will I meet my new employer soon? You will not, no. Well, damn. Greeting guests is my duty and mine alone. And you have been greeted. Now, on to the rules of the house. He holds out his hand. If you would allow me. Allow you to... what? Give you the house rules. Have you never shared data with another android before? I shake my head slowly. It's been a long time since I left the workshop and longer since I've worked with another android. Instead of replying and making a further fool of myself, I take my, his hand. Right away, a small light begins to glow between our clasped hands. The data packet he sends immediately flashing before my eyes. I quickly run through the new information. The list of house rules from the data transfer isn't very long, but two of the rules strike me as a particular, particularly bizarre. Do you have any questions? Yes. I do. I stare at him. Such as? Rule number one. I must never try to see the Nightmare Prince. And that's not all. Rule number seven states that I must never enter the Nightmare Prince's room for any reason. And another thing. You only refer to him as the Nightmare Prince. Doesn't he, you know, have a real name? Victor stares at me coolly. He does have a real name, yes. That is merely what he prefers to be called. Aside from that, those are statements, not questions. These rules make it seem like I'll never meet my employer. That's because you will not. Huh? That's not strange to you? No. In any case, I am not completely certain why my master has chosen a Dreamweaver model for purchase when we do not have a loom here. As such, until he gives me a list of duties for you, you are free to do as you like. Oh. In the meantime, I will be cleaning. I have a, I have a choice? That does my former master and I worked together for many years. Our work was always the same. Weaving silk tapestries of unrivaled silk for purchase day in and day out. I never had to think about what we would do. I always knew. If I have a choice though, then I'll choose to explore the mansion, Mama. If it's all right with you, I'd like to familiarize myself with my new home. Very well. I don't miss the relief in his face as I take my leave up the stairs. Yeah, you, you, you don't want me here. It's a good thing too, because I absolutely have no idea how to clean. Oh my God, girl. Mechanical walls line the house as I explore the house freely, the halls freely. While most of the empty rooms I've seen so far are similar in function to the ones in my old workshop, others I have to reach into my database to learn their names. I wonder if my old master's home was like this. I never left the workshop. When the shop was closed since powering down, there was my norm, but it makes me feel lonely to think that while I did go out and run errands for him, the one thing I'd never done is see my master's home. Maybe, maybe he didn't view me as real after all. The thought dims my mood as I walk down another hallway. At the end of it, I can see a silvery door, the red embellishing its surface like a warning. Considering all the other rooms I've seen thus far were empty, both android and human alike, this locked one can only be one place. The Room of the Nightmare Prince. Mm -hmm. Or whatever his name is. We just gonna call him Nightmare Prince, boo. As if drawn by magnetism, I slowly gravitate closer to the door. My curiosity gets the better of me as I reach out to touch the handle lightly. I don't turn it, but to my surprise... Mechanical sounds begin to click and clack as a slip of paper prints from the door. I take the sheet of paper and read the message written there aloud. Don't. Come in. 
the Nightmare Prince. Hmm. Is that your real name? New sheet of paper pops out the, the door slot. I was once called something else, but that was a long time ago. There's no response for a long moment until... My name, it doesn't matter. Not anymore. I see. Well, Nightmare Prince, I... I apologize for disturbing you, but I admit, I am curious about you. Curious? The voice comes through the door is distorted. If I'm correct, filtered, it growls the hall speakers, making me take a step back in surprise. I'd be intimidated if not for the fact that I'm much more intrigued. Clearly my employer is a private person, but to be this private? To go to the extent of concealing one's voice. Since when could an android be curious? Alarm floods through me. I forgot that such things are uncommon among androids. Perhaps I should have concealed the fact that I can feel since the reason I was sold in the first place is because I can feel. But now it's too late. You know what? I'm going to just tell them the truth. I'm going to be dead ass with it. Like, what's up? I... He has no proof of purchase. If he rejects me and I have to run away, at least I can. I am different. There's a silence on the other side of the door. Then... I see. As am I. I smile, unsure of whether or not he can see me. Then we make quite a pair, don't we? Hmm? I laugh lightly, hoping that I don't sound as bitter as I feel, but there's no response on the other side of the door. Satisfied with this, at least as a meeting, I clasp my hands together. I'll be taking my leave now. The prince is silent as I depart, wondering what exactly my life will be with such strange companions now that my own future is in my hands. I returned downstairs to the room where I had first met Victor. At the sight of me, Victor's brows lift. Ah, there you are. What took so long? Were you settling in your bedroom? I have a room. Instead of replying, Victor sighs. <sighs> I'll show it to you once you get back. Back from where? The elder brother of the young master has asked to speak with you in the garden. Just like that, any comfort I'd felt before drains out of my body. The elder brother of the young master? What does that make him to me? You're still standing there. Motherfucker. I'm aware. To my surprise, Victor's eyes turn kind. My bad, y'all. Are you feeling unprepared? I am, yes. Take a moment to gather yourself. Roman is not an impatient man. With those few words, he turns away and continues cleaning. That is like the nicest thing way you treated me, bro. That's surprisingly encouraging of him. Yeah. I take a few more minutes to gather myself before heading off to meet my employer's elder brother. Like, is he going to be like old, old or like adult old? Having already roamed the house, the layout is already mapped out by my internal systems. I find the garden easily. When I do, a man stands with his back facing me, not turning as I walk through sliding white doors. Ah, you must be all right. Hey, hey, yo, the unfamiliar stranger turns toward me, his pierced ears glinting under the full might of the sun. I scan him from top to bottom. Yeah, damn right. Look at him. A handsome man. He wears a deep purple jacket, immaculate hemwork on the sleeves, his long model less legs and broad shoulders are perfectly proportioned. I would love to make clothes for a form like this. Yeah, you know, I bet you'd like to do something else. It's uh, not all I notice. His eyes sparkle with a mysterious look that tells me he could charm a snake from its den. The stranger speaks. He's a Scorpio. That's what it is. I should introduce myself. The name's Roman Price. Roman Price. What up, Roman? Uh, I see. Nice to meet you then. 
This video is not sponsored by Roman. I mean, they can be if they want to be. Hey, oh no, you just said my name. Why did I reintroduce myself? I try not to fluster further, but he winks at me. His posture relaxed. Welcome to Ask Price. How's your first hour been, little lady? Like, why are you winking like that? I smiled tentatively, like, you know. I'm an android, but I have my own bedroom, and I was purchased for no apparent purpose. In a word, strangely. Life has been treating me very strangely. That's because you're a special oh. one. Why else would it be necessary to secure you on the black market? Uh, what? My eyes widen. Yeah. Black market? I look at him in shock. I'd assume I was being sold at a normal auction online or something of that sort. Roman notes my expression seriously. What? Did you think a sentient android is easy to come by these days? Rogues aren't exactly filling the streets and living normal lives. Yo, you know a whole lot, bro. Rogues? I never heard the term before. Something Roman immediately picks up on as he notes the expression on my face. You know, androids that act against their programming, androids who don't always obey, and androids who can think and feel. Androids like you and, mm. well, I'm sure you met the others. I think for a moment. Like me? Yes, rogues like you. Not all rogues are self You also everybody in the, the house got uh, are sentient beings? Roman steps towards me slowly before reaching out a single hand. I wince as he reaches from top of my head, but to my surprise, he plops it right on top of my shoulder and pats me there lightly instead. I don't know if I read that right, because I'm still flabbergasted. You're special. Just like my brother. You're different from the people. Or in your case, androids around you. That's the second reference to the brother. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. Being different. Hey, 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 Roman, man. Roman clasps his hands together. Okay, Birdman. In <laughs> any case, I'm hoping you make it home here. Yeah. There's a quiet beeping sound. Roman checks his wrist, turning off the alarm. And you turning off alarms on me? Sorry. I wish I could stay, Rev, but I gotta get going. I'll be checking in on you periodically. I like his hair, man. With that, he turns to leave, but I had after him determination in my steps. Hey, man, it looks like she hates to see you leave, but loves to watch you go. I grab the edge of his jacket sleeve, stopping in his tracks. He lifts an eyebrow, his eyes curious. I want to ask him why there's so many androids here and if they're all rogues. So I do. Are we... are all the androids here rogues? I think you can discover the answer to that question yourself. Hmm? Relax, Arev. Find your space here and you'll be happy. I like his jacket. Roman offers hand to me to shake. I've never shaken a human's hand before, but it feels, I don't know, real. I promise. I reach for it this time without hesitation. I felt when I felt I ripped my apart, my proof of ownership. This time I'm determined to embrace being free. Sorry, I gotta get better at reading. This is a lot. Roman leaves me alone with that thought. Find my space here, huh? Well, the first thing I'd like to do is be friends with Tom. Haha, <laughs> but just make myself useful. Maybe I can ask for help from someone I met before. Speak with Victor about my new employer. Unsurprisingly, Victor is still cleaning when I return. Can you turn off the vacuum? I don't want to interrupt him, yet I need answers, and asking him seems to be the best way to get some. It's true that he doesn't seem to be the most forthcoming when it comes to giving information, but... To my surprise, Victor glances at me, turning off the vacuum to look at me seriously before I've even the chance to speak. Yes. I didn't say anything. Yo, why you already sound on only... Not with your mouth, no. But the way you're staring must mean you have something to say. I mean, he got free, free right. As much as I want to deny it, he's perfectly right. I hedge for a moment. Well, since I have your attention, why doesn't your master, my employer, ever leave his room? Victor's response is automatic. 
That, Allrev, is a private matter, the details of which are none of your concern. He pauses. At least, not at this moment. Oh, so I'm gonna find out. I help him a lot to ask another question, but Victor has already turned the vacuum back on. Hey, come on, bro. That's rude. Wait. That's rude. He shuts off the vacuum again, bringing his cool gaze back towards me. Yes, Allrev? When will you find out why your master purchased me? What do you mean? Huh? I look at him steadily. You said that you weren't certain why the Nightmare Prince chose to purchase me when you don't have a loom. I want to know when you'll be certain. Victor looks at me for a moment, his expression lighting with respect before he turns away dismissively. If you had not noticed, I am working quite hard. The implication is clear. He's too busy to help me, or so he thinks. If the information pertains to my future, I should think I ought to be privy. I lift an eyebrow in earnest. Besides, if you do want help cleaning, you can just say that instead of acting as though I'm prying. Hmm? I believe wanting help is not quite the same as wanting work to get done. Dash, bro, Leo. <gasps> oh. I blink at him. The metallic click quietly audible as my lids touch. What an interesting android. I smile, unsure as if I am more amused by his cool demeanor or more frustrated. I keep both emotions inside. Somehow I have the feeling that if he saw me laugh, he'd become a huffy. Oh, become huffy. Oh, become huffy. But other androids don't get huffy, do they? I watch him clean and I can't help but wonder if he and the others are like me. Different. Feeling. A rogue. Thankfully, Victor does not notice me staring, I think, to look away, but there's still so much I want to ask, much I want to say. My brows draw closer, determination on my lips. I'm an android, I was built to be industrious. I'll do what I know I can, I'll do as he asks. I don't mind helping you, but I think I could be more helpful if I told you my skill set. Let's be efficient. Victor nods slowly. Sensible. As a Dreamweaver model, I suppose I can guess, but please, do tell. Weaving, sewing, threading, knitting, and other sorts of crafts and creations. <laughs> he nods slowly. As I thought, but clearly failed to consider. In that case, may I ask you to repair these garments and deliver them to the prince? And you don't dare go in. His glaze eyes glare at me. I nod eagerly anyway, taking the warning in stride. A test to take my mind off this strange situation would be most helpful. I incline my head towards him, clasping my hands together. As you wish. But first. But first what? I must deliver you some information that I find most prudent. Namely, how things go in this house. I'm ready. As a free android, I cannot make you do anything. But know this. I have raised the prince since he were a boy. If you ever endanger him, you will be dismissed at the very least. And at the very worst. Ooh. Much worse. Hey, yo. Is that understood? I nod slowly. Victor said, yo, you want to go to the scrap heap? Victor stares at me. He's like, Good. yo, yeah. Now, follow me. Want to go to the junkyard? That's what I thought. He leads me down the dark hallway that I already visited in my earlier tour of the house. Like, yeah, don't mess with my dude. This is your room. I will mess you up. I stare at the space wide eyed. My room? So he wasn't kidding earlier. I don't believe I misspoke. The Nightmare Prince was quite clear that you ought to receive your own space as soon as you arrived. Here, you can power down for the night if you so wish. I... I don't know what to say. Appreciation of any kind would suffice. Of any kind? Why is your master so kind to androids? To my surprise, Victor considers us silently for a long moment. 
Finally, he lifts his shoulders in reply, so I prompt him lightly. I want answers, and it's clear that Victor holds at least one of them. Is it perhaps because the prince was raised by one? Boom. That is a question that only the Nightmare Prince himself could answer. Come on, answer. Vic. Come on, Vic. He I'll love sure you. He love you, Vic. He love you. Vic opened his mouth, looking annoyed at the possibility of my interacting directly with the prince, but I quickly speak to distract him before he can predictably warn me to stay away. Do you have a room as well? He dodges my question. All who live here have their own rooms. So that's a yes. I choose not to power down, but I have one. Yes. I'll have to see it then. What? When will our little tour go there? Victor glares at me. Never. Oh, goddamn. I sigh. Shit. Must you be so predictable, Victor? Why don't you live a little? Do I look human to you? I lightly touch the connective joint of my neck. You're not old enough to look like as much of an android as I do, so... I'm going to say yes, you do look human to me. Ooh. Victor looks annoyed, choosing not to reply. Yeah, that's what I thought. If that'll be all. Mm -hmm. It won't be. I have one last request. Oh, Rev. Yes. I'd like to thank your master. Is it possible for me to get a loom here? I'll speak with the prince. I know. Thank you. As for my question, you said all who live here. Who else lives here? Who all here, bro? This may come as a surprise to you, but House Price is a sanctuary for androids such as yourself. I want to ask, but he is already naming all the mansion's residents. This is the Eastern Wing. Here resides your room as well as that of Zaffir and Diego. My room is in the Western Wing of the mansion, along with the Nightmare Prince. Zaffir and Diego? Are they... like us? They are both androids, yes. I would not consider myself similar to them in any other way. Well, damn. I try to smother a smile, but it slips through just oh, yes. barely. Of course not. My smile fades. Still, a house of androids. I'm certainly curious. The question is rolling into my mind faster than I have a chance to form them with my mouth. What are the other androids like, and how do they end up here? Are they like me, purchased like things, but allowed to live free? Can they think? Can they feel? Will they, will they like a per like me as a person? I want to ask, but Victor already seems to have made up his mind that he's ready to leave. I'll be taking my leave now, as I have many duties for the day and limited time. I got shit to do. In the face of his determination, I don't have the heart to ask him anymore. Victor clicks his heels together and with that, departs. As soon as I hear his footsteps disappear, I sit down on the bed. Immediately, I feel a signature tingle on my skin that tells me my batteries are absorbing the energy emitted from the power station. A power station designed to look like a bed? That's dope. I don't know what kind of person my employer is, but it's as if my heart's been red. I'm not human. I never will be. And I am content, but these are feelings I possess deep inside that wish to know what it's like to be one of them, to think like them, to act like them. No matter how much I feel like I am real, what am I but a combination of letters and numbers? As it does whenever I think too hard about my existence, my hands start to tingle with discomfort. I know it's more likely to be psychosomatic than a real illness, but even that knowledge doesn't make it feel any less real. Do you know my secret, Nightmare Prince? I wonder how he could've. It's not as if my former master's family ever acknowledged that I could feel, at least not to my face. I shake my head. I don't feel the need to power down anyway. 
alive, so I might as well get to task. So what's the first thing I'd like to do? I feel at a loss, so I make a search of the internet to see what I can find. How to make a fresh start. Lists pop into my mind, so I choose the topmost researched answer. 10 tips for making a fresh start. I skim the list until one of the tips jump out at me. Reinvent yourself. Reinvent myself? But how? I can't change my clothes. I don't want to change my outer shell. As you should, Melvin Queen. I touch my hair lightly. Your hair's fine. But I can change this. What? I touch my hair and see got a mirror. There's one in the corner of the room, so I move over to that side of the room and get to work. Our Rev, what are you doing? More than a few hours later, I look in the mirror to see my handiwork. Uh, that's certainly different, isn't it? Oh, we went from pigtails to... Not this would hardly recognize me if you saw me like this, but the days where I sought approval from my masters are over. I have to look to the future. I wonder what my new master employer looks like. I wonder what my new master and employer looks like. Well, no time like the present to find out. Shaking my freshly done hair, I make for the door. I knock lightly, but to my mild surprise, there's no reply. I try again. <sighs> oh, hello. I know that he'll probably be less than happy with me, but I reach for the door handle. And the moment I do... Why are you trying to open my door? Because it's the only way to get your attention. I knocked politely a moment ago, didn't I? The prince doesn't reply, but I don't mind. I'm the one with the questions unanswered. I have two questions for you. I pause for a moment. Three questions, actually, but... Are you sure you do not wish for me to call you by name? No one has called me by my name in a long time. Is that because you dislike it? It is. My former name was a human one. And I... I am not human. Not anymore. Not anymore? I want to ask what he means, but I'm too late. Ask your questions. Please. What did you purchase me for? I hate to see that which is valuable thrown away. I stare at the door. Thrown away? To be seen as valuable is touching, but thrown away? You mean my master's family? They were going to scrap me? Yes. I'm not surprised, but somehow hearing him say it so bluntly hurts. I'm sorry. No, I, I suppose I should thank you. I turn away from the door, but his voice follows me down the hall. Didn't you have two questions? What? Uh, not anymore. I can't find it in myself to reply. I shut the door behind me only to hear Nightmare's Prince voice floating quietly above me. Did I hurt you? I'm not sure if he can see me, but I shake my head. You just told me the truth. He murmurs quietly in reply. The truth hurts sometimes. It does. Still, I ignore his gentle words to ask a prudent question. How are you here? I'm always here. I haven't inhabited my own body since. He trails off, but I don't let him off so easily. Since? Not for a long time. Hey, yo. I see. I touch my chest lightly as if I had a heart instead of a heart core. It would hurt, but instead I feel a sadness that permeates my whole entire being. All right. Are you all right? I shake my head again. You know, it's funny that you haven't been in your body, as you say, in a long time. But I would do anything to have a human body right now. Oh? 
Why is that? If I had a human body, I could cry. I have read that it's a very useful thing to do when you're in pain. Aww. Are you in pain, then? I don't reply. Instead, I let out a little laugh, but it doesn't sound warm. I don't want it to. Can you see me? I cannot. No. Good. I'd like to be left alone, if that's alright. It's not every day you find out that the people whose livelihoods came from your hard work so easily cast you aside. Damn. I see. There's a pause. I, th I think he's gone when... I'm sorry. For what? For making you sad. That was not my intention. I wouldn't have told you if I'd known you'd be sad. I... He trails off again before letting out a quiet sigh. I know what it's like to feel thrown away. To be thrown away. Say what? Question his judgment? Accept his comforting words? Well, you know what we're gonna do? Neither, because what y'all have to do is get this game and find out for your damn selves. I'm gonna put the links for everything in the description so y'all can go ahead and purchase or put it on your wish list but check this game out because honestly this story has been legit from second number one okay so this is papito here making the showcase for indie game collective and i hope you have a great time zone i'll see you on the next one you guys Oh, 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 oh,